We go so over the agenda first. No, no. So we'll this is a roll call, mm -hmm. and then we'll ask for a motion to approve the agenda. Yeah. Right. So if there's any, or if there's any amendments to the agenda, yeah. and that way, you know, sometimes we add things at the end of the meeting. Mm -hmm. This is the opportunity to add it at the end when there's okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. At this time, it looks like it's. Six o'clock, so we're going to go ahead and begin the meeting. Um, sorry, this is the this is the uh, June twenty eighth Historic Preservation Com Commission meeting for the City of Monroe. Call to order. Present, we have um, Laura Powell, myself, Elizabeth Jones, Jane Camp, Faye Rossi in attendance, and we have um, additionally city staff, Brad Callender, um, and city planner, Laura Wilson. Has everybody had a chance to review the meetings from last, last month? Do we have any changes or corrections to the previous month's minutes? Do we have a motion to approve as submitted? Motion by Jane Camp. Do we do we have a second? Second, second by Faye. All in favor? Okay. So we have something new tonight. We're going to have an approval of the agenda. Has everybody had a chance to review the agenda? Do we have a motion to approve the agenda? Motion to approve the agenda by Faye. Do we have a second? Second by Jane Camp. All in favor? Okay. Agenda is approved. And moving on down. Next thing, let's see. We have old business. Laura, does that look right? Next thing on the list. All right. All right, see, the first thing we have on here, we have, let's see, Lori Volk was the, was here. We had a motion to table that last time. Yes, and she emailed city staff a week ago and officially asked for it to be tabled again until the July meeting. Okay, so we would need a motion to table that again until next month, is that correct? That is correct, the July meeting date is the 26th. Okay, well we need to ask if there were any questions from the public first? No, okay. Um, do we have a motion to table that again? A motion. Okay, do we have a second? All right, second Make, motion. Make sure y'all are all speaking into the microphones pretty well. Okay. Motion by Laura, second by Faye. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Any opposed? Okay, motion unanimous, unanimously carries. All right, second item of business is signage for 106 South Broad Street. Okay, go ahead and approach. Okay, can you? Just speak into the microphone and just. Good evening. Um, we have um, requested permission to paint a mural on the side of our building. Um, Excuse me, ma'am. Yeah. Could you, uh, for the record, state your name? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Heather Swanepoel with Rinse Bath and Body. Thank you. We're located at 106 South Broad Street. South Broad. Mm -hmm. It's the. Oh, oh, I got you right. Okay, I'm with you now. Our, the side of the building extends past the row parallel to Spring Street. Do you all have this? Yes. Oh, perfect. Um, and what we would like to do is, um, everyone is always so infatuated with our story of how we started, and it was because I couldn't knit, and it's just, it is a, an anchor for the business, it's the anchor for what 
I think the charm of, of what has taken us across the country. So we are proposing um, adding our story to that very blank wall on the side of Spring Street. And it will be, um, we measure the wall as approximately 38 feet wide, 25 feet tall, um, and it'll be mostly font with some graphics mixed in to give it an element of whimsy and some interest as far as, like there'll be a knitting uh, yarn ball with um, knitting needles and a scarf rendition of the first scarf that actually started making soap. Um, our sprinter van, uh, highlighting words that are super important to us and part of our core values that we hire stay-at-home moms, uh, that we make everything natural, and all that good stuff. Is there anything else that you wanted to add? Do you have any questions? <laughs> um, I did have some notes here. We're gonna we're gonna look at the zoning ordinance. I know on this, and I did want to before we got into a bunch of questions up here. I did want to note um, the zoning ordinance states that the purpose of the historic district sign ordinance is to ensure the district signage is harmonious in proportion, form, color, and materials to the character of the historic district. Visual relatedness is crucial to the goal of an integrated historic district, and signs play a key role in helping to preserve the historical district's sense of time and place and achieve the desired effect of charm and compatibility. The ordinance allows businesses to maintain their individual identities and also become identified with the downtown historic district as a whole. Signage shall, shall complement the architectural details of the building. Letters can be painted or mounted directly on a signboard, storefront wall, or window if in proportion to the storefront. Lots in the historic district are allowed the same amount of signage as lots outside of the historic district or greater if the form and scale of the historic character of the building or project so suggests. Inside the historic district, businesses may also utilize canopy signs, swinging or projected signs, menu signs, and sandwich signs. Acceptable lettering materials include wood, stone, synthetic stone, metal, vinyl, dimensional plastic, acrylic, or high-density poly polystyrene foam. The overall design of all signage shall be compatible with the historic district's overall character. And I think, Faye, you had had something you wanted to... Well, our problem is we don't have a, a covenant for murals. Mm -hmm. And since yours is an advertisement with rents, your company in it, it has to fall under wall signs. Okay, and that would mean uh, I'm on page 84 of our book that we have to go by, mm -hmm. I gather. And it says that um, the wall sign shall not exceed one and one and a half square foot per linear foot of the building. And the total maximum for a single sign shall not exceed 75 square feet. And only one sign is allowed for a wall. And if you look on, is it West Spring? Uh, yes. I'm not Dad. sure which, which ordinance you're referring to. You're right. Uh, the 75 square foot maximum has been removed, so it looks like you've got an older zoning ordinance copy. I've got a brand new one right in front of me here. I don't have a brand new one. What is it? It's the same thing you just read, minus the 75 square foot max. Yeah, that's what I said. Right, but that's not in there now. Oh, no, ma'am, but you were right about the other dimensions, about it being one and a half square foot per wall, linear foot of wall. And to, to your point, I, I've got it measured at 52 feet, which would allow you a 78 square foot wall sign. Do you know the dimension of the sign proposed to the commission that you've drawn on your... Oh, bigger than that. Then, I mean, the, ma the max you would be allowed would be 78 square feet. It's how much did you say? 78 square feet. 78. 78, because it's 52 but feet. Based on her size. Based on the actual dimension of the wall that's facing okay. Spring Street. Okay. Um, and if I could, well, since I'm already talking about that, I will make one comment about that is that 
you, since you don't own the property that faces Spring Street, which is the row, the property next door, which is the row, there is harm that that person could erect a structure that would block your mm -hmm. sign. Any sign that you put on this building wouldn't, you know, you technically don't face a road frontage on that wall, technically. Right. But visibly, I mean, I'm, you and I can go stand out there right now. We can see it, no doubt. Uh, so if you were allowed one, I would think that if this commission permits it, that it stay within the parameters of the... All right, and let me, uh, let me ask you this. The one on West Spring, is it approximately this size that you're talking about? You know, the one with the mountains, that signage on the wall? Uh, no. It's no. smaller? The one on West Spring, like the one that's... Oh, you mean the, uh, the, the, the coffee shop? The coffee camper one? No. Or? Yes, yes. Coffee. I, I, I would put it in the range of 50 to 70 square feet, somewhere in there. Yeah, I would agree that that's... To give you an idea yeah. of what we're talking about. In, in other fact, words, I think that used to be the rent sign uh, was in that lo exact location at one point. That's right. yeah. In other words, it can't be the full building. Okay. And that's in a relationship about what space you would have. So if we were to remove our logos, and so there would be no logo or mention of rents... Would that take it away from the needing the sign ordinance and no. put it into a mural? There's just so we're clear. There's no such thing as a mural. It's a wall sign as the as it's defined in our ordinance. Okay. So, so the so if you put a message on a wall, it's called a wall sign. Whether it's got whether it's got graphic depictions in it or a message, it's going to be treated as a wall sign as far as that's concerned. Okay. So all of the and just it, I'm not trying to split hairs, but just to make sure. So the big Monroe one on the side coming this way that's a wall sign that would be technically a wall sign that was i guess done by the devout downtown development authority okay we didn't have anything to do with that we don't know how that got up there <laughs> there's a lot of those <laughs> it didn't come before us okay that was somebody over our head so 78 square feet and anything i want within reason. That's not obscene or profanity or <laughs> those okay. other limitations that are outlined in the zoning ordinance. Okay. Well, thank you for your time. Do we have any, well, do we have any questions from the public? Do we have a motion to approve as presented? We approving it as a wall sign, or we can't approve it as she asked as a mural. We can't approve it as a mural. I, mean, I think you're taking a vote on her her submittal. Do what? I think you're taking a vote on what exactly what she submitted to this commission for consideration. There's not there hasn't been an alternative proposed to the commission. So you're voting on what has been submitted to you. Okay, so it's submitted as a mural. Well, that, let's stop calling it a mural for a minute. It's, I mean, what she submitted, she has defined it as a mural in her application. Right, but, that's what I meant. But asking. in nowhere in the ordinances of the city of Monroe, it's, it's a wall sign. Right, right we know so, that. So what she submitted to you is, is basically a wall sign for your approval, and so you're voting on what she has submitted tonight, which was the sign, which I don't think she had a dimension Would you like to see sign? a smaller sign submitted and look at that? She, yeah, I mean, that's something you could consider is let her submit an alternative to that would meet the dimension so that way you could vote on it in something appropriate right. that would be comfortable with the commission. You could table it until she brings a smaller Would that design. work for you for us to table it and you come back with the right proportions and whatnot um, or a smaller sign so we could see, you know, what you have in mind? Just shrinking that is not, I, for me, it wouldn't work. Mm -hmm. Um, we can see what we can definitely see what we we can come up with and just to um, there are a lot of murals around town I mean the alleys have them they're we all understand over. that and, but, but I don't have anything to do with that they didn't come before is us. there am I not in front of the right committee I I, mean, I did and not in a, not in a bad way we but wish we knew. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we we've, we've been approached for a different mural on our building, um, and I would like to save that gentleman a lot of time to let him know where where he should go looking for a mural. Just just to help you with the word mural, 
I, I've looked at this issue and I looked at your application and I've had several people ask me about this. Obviously, these signs were in town here before I came to work for the city. But when I read what a mural is in other jurisdictional definitions, not this jurisdiction's definitions, because we have nothing like that that defines that. Something like the Welcome to Downtown Monroe is considered like an art. So when you say mural, that can be strictly graphic art. Yours has a specific message in it, and that is a very specific way to say that it's a sign. So if you were just painting a, a, a picture of mountains and whatnot, I don't know that anyone in this city would be opposed to that <laughs> in, in any way, shape, or form. Um, I think that's the way maybe the downtown one is considered. I don't know. Okay. So when you say mural, I don't think signs. I don't think content with messages. I mean, just based on the limit. I have to look at it with blinders based on our limited code. Um, and even if we were to introduce something like mural into our code, it's going to fall under the definition, I guarantee you, of wall sign. Because the city is going to have their hands tied as to how they can, what parameters they can define those within. Because that's where the law is going to keep us, is in a specific dimension. What am I, what am I signing? Is it a wall that I'm signing? Then it's a wall sign. Is it a, is it a freestanding sign like at a street, like you see when you go down, you know, Spring Street? Then it's a, then it's a ground sign. That's, that's where the city has to be when it comes to defining what these things are. So when you say mural, I think art, I think mountains, scenery, something nice, you know. Um, but yours didn't quite fall into that, that sort of purview, even if I didn't have that in my ordinance. So it, if we came back with wanting to cover that wall with mountains, well, is, is that it, would that be an option to bring, just so we don't waste our time, our, our designers' time, recreating things? Or if, if you're doing something that's praising Monroe, you know, something that's in keeping with the other signage uh, murals that we have in town, we would definitely consider it okay. more appropriate. Right? Okay, thank you. Okay. Do we want to table it then until next? Do you, do you want to table it or? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Do we have Do we have a motion? Okay, I move that we table this uh, presentation until she can come back with something that meets our guidelines. What is the date? What is the date for that? And we can see that is in scale to the building. Okay. So your next meeting would be July twenty sixth, or if you wanted two meetings out, that's August twenty third. Okay. August. We have a motion by Faye. Do we have a second? I'll second. All right, and a second by Laura. All right, all in favor? Aye. Unanim any opposed? It was unanimous. Okay, unanimous motion. Motion carried. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. See you in August. Thank you. All right, third item of business. Uh, we have new construction, um, 1238 South Madison. Or do we want to hear these together, the 1238 and 1240, or do we want to do them separate? You can hear them together. I just need separate motions. Okay. We have 1238 and 1240 South Madison Avenue. Good evening. My name is Lawrence Parker, and this is my wife, Lisa. I'm the CEO of Regen Properties, LLC. We submitted a application for a certificate of appropriateness for a new construction at 1238. Oh, we submitted a application for a certificate of appropriateness for the construction of a new home at 1238 South Madison. Respectfully, from what I see, I've looked at from Q Public, the house that's on 1238 South Madison was, I think it was built in 1920, and it looks like it was 
1,536 square feet. And I, I just feel like it's just got such a, a much smaller footprint as do many of the houses in that neighborhood. And I think that these, these houses that you're wanting to build, they, they, from the plans, those have what, 3,746 3, square feet apiece, correct? What was the square footage on those houses? We're right at 2,000. This plan here says 2,100. And we but that doesn't include the, um, the, the additional spaces, the garage and the uh, porches. Oh, the carport. And the carport and the porches. So all together, it's 3,746 square feet, if you include the additional spaces. And that 3,746 square feet to replace 1,536 square feet, I think that that's really changing a footprint. Um, and there are two-story houses replacing a one-story house. And I think that that just really doesn't blend in with the district. I mean, Do you have anything to read on infill? Um, paragraph on infill, new construction. I'll have to pull that up. Go ahead and ask any questions that you might have, Faye, while I find that. Now, if I could ad address that a little. Yes, certainly. The original house of the 1,600 square feet, it had a garage. It can't hear you. Oh. You're tall, I know. <laughs> the uh, original house with the 1,600 square feet, it had a garage, but it's already been removed. Mm -hmm. So that probably would have factored into the square footage of the original house also. Do mm -hmm. you think it would have doubled it? No. So would you be able to give me a maximum... Uh, allowable square footage? I just think that when we look at these, when we look at the foot historic footprint, I just don't think it should tra change that drastically. I just think that you're, you're, it, it needs to, to resemble the historic footprint of what was there. I mean, what do y'all think? Uh, I went all up and down that street and there are single houses, cottages, there are a couple of um, uh, craftsman houses. There's only one two-story house, and it's way down at the other end of that. Mm -hmm. But almost everything is lower. And you're talking about putting two or three two-story houses that are bigger than the one that you tore down. Well, they just don't fit, and they, they need to fit in the neighborhood. The, the way that the current house is constructed with the attic and the pitch of the roof, the new home is not much taller than the existing home. But, but, but what you're showing are not the right style for Monroe. These are beach houses. Okay. They look great in Charleston. Okay. But it doesn't go with Monroe, Georgia. Well, okay. We have a few things here in the manual that talk about um, infill and, and recognizing basic design concepts in, in new, new, um, new constructions. And it talks about, define the area of influence. The area of influence will vary for different locations adjacent to a historic district. And so you're, you look at the area of influence around, you know, at the buildings that are around your, your, where you're gonna build. So the zone of influence is important to define at the, on, at the outset to assure the proposed improvements give appropriate consideration to the historic resources of the dis district. And so we have some examples in the manual, and we can send these pages to you to look at if it would help. And so then it talks about identifying historic context, and you want to recognize and relate to the established configurations of lots and relationships of buildings um, that lines to the orienta orientation and setbacks. So you're going to look at a historic pattern of how all the buildings relate to one another. Um, and you recognize basic design concepts, proportion. Proportion is the ratio which relates dimensions of elements of a building, height, width, window size, roof pitch, et cetera, of buildings as a whole and to each other. So, you, you know, you wouldn't have a, a, a 
a very large two-story building next, you know, where you never had those before in the area. Um, pattern is the arrangement of similar design elements in a regular and repetitive manner as an architectural expression. Patterns can be found in facades of individual buildings or in groups of buildings. So you don't want to change a pattern. You know, if, if you've got that district and it's that it's, it's all very similar, you wouldn't change the pattern by throwing something brand new into the pattern, you know, because the district's going to be very similar. Uh, the, the house that you're talking about that you're moving has a very high pitch and has a second story, and that's great. We have no problem with that. Some of the houses are single story, and that's okay too, but to do a complete, total two-story house in that area, it's like a sore thumb. Okay. Okay? So the I other thing that we need from you, because we have to go by proportion and the size of the lot, is we need an in-scale plat that puts your proposed location of your building. But it needs to be in-scale. So and that we so can just, just to be clear, so it's not the height of the building, it's just the fact that it's a two-story. Well, and, 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 and you know what, I, and Faye, maybe I'm wrong, and, 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 and correct me if I am, but I wouldn't even be so opposed, and if you're looking for more room, and I wouldn't even be totally against having more room, even as in a separate outbuilding somewhere if you really needed additional space, but I think it's just having that large of a structure right. You know, when you didn't have straight that large up. of a structure straight up, but I could even see having a smaller structure and even a separate outbuilding on the same property if it was a little bit smaller. I mean, could could you? Right for a garage. Yeah, like that, because I just think it's having it all there, like just because it, you never, you wouldn't have never had that. Right. And it's just in 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 that shape and form, and I just think it's just too much. It is. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yep. It and, needs and we're willing to look at different plans with you. We okay. have no problem with that. Now, I brought a couple of pictures. Can you take a look at a couple yes. and just tell yes, me yes, if you yes. think? Okay. And we understand people that haven't done this, you know, for a living. Are no, not we want to we want to work with you, or, you know. And we want to help you. We No, I understand completely. No, no, it, and, and it is just it's not for that area. But not for us. <laughs> just not for that area, but it is historic. That was a great one. I love it. It's, it is beautiful. These are much better. Okay. Yeah. Like it, this is this is Craftsman. That's perfect. Yeah. You could do. Well, you just talking about to, to the upper level here. Yeah, because we have some right up the street at Davis, that new yeah. construction. Those are like 18. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're okay think, on that. And the, and the style is perfect. That's, yeah, that's the style that's is perfect. Okay, so we don't bite. <laughs> I do like that. Yeah. Yeah. What do you have like that. I like that. It's just a little bit, it's not, it's not just as grand and giant and... Yeah. But we still need to have a plat okay. and, and the position so that okay. we can check that it fits the, the lot. That will be great. You know, before we can approve it. So we need to, do you have a problem with us tabling it and you bringing that sure. back next time okay. with the other papers? Ms. Faye, are you okay with them submitting? They had a plat approved. to, yeah. to or yeah. With them drawing on that plat, are you okay with that? They have an approved plat. And so they have an approved plat. The, the, the way the two lots on South Madison are, one is one third and the other is two thirds. Yeah, we know. With the new drawing, it makes them 50 and 50. Okay. So therefore, it will be an equal size lot for 1238 and for 1240. That's good. That's okay. Good. I think she's just asking that you represent the footprint on a plat so they can, so they can okay. see that. That'll be great. Sounds good. Okay. So Doesn't we'll. Want to table it? Table it, yes. Okay. Good. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. So, do we have uh, do we have a motion to table that until? Yeah. See what 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 date do we want to table that till? To July or August? What what works for you guys? July. Okay. 
Do we have a motion to take, do we need to say that, what date is that? Uh, July 25th. 26th. 26th, 26th. okay. Do we have a motion to table that till July 26th? I'll motion. We have a motion by Laura. Second. We have a second by Jane. All in favor? Aye. All right, unanimous approval. We motion carried to table that till July 26th. Thank you guys. Are you also tabling the 1240? Oh yes, okay, wait, that was, we were tabling 1238 till July 26th. Um, uh, we actually should table both of them. Wait, 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 we're gonna have a second motion. Oh, well. <laughs> Do we have a motion to table 1240 um, until July 26th? Jane has motioned to table till 1240 to July 26th. Do we have a second? Laura has seconded. All in favor? Aye. Unanimous vote to table 1240 to July 26. Thank you very much. Thank you, Laura. All right. Next item of business. Um, let's see, signage for 127 North Lumpkin Street. Long time no see. Oh, I'm back. How are y'all? Good. How are you doing? So long. <laughs> That's okay. Um, yeah, so uh, we, uh, my name's Chris Collin. I'm with uh, uh, Strange Taco Bar and uh, 127 um, North Lumpkin LLC, which is applying for the um, sign for Strange Taco. It's, um, you guys can see the dimensions hopefully on your drawing. Um, it's actually smaller than what the size building will allow. Uh, it's being painted on on the building directly onto the brick, um, and um, it's being lit with um, just regular down lights. That there's there should be a, a close up of those in your packet too. Also, um, do you have any questions about the sign? An artist, I like your strange graphic. Oh, thank you. We're really proud of it. We j we just actually look, did a, a logo refresh. They I really say like what it. they mean. You yeah, know, you know, you read it. I like that. Yeah, we didn't want it, anyone to think they were going to come in and just have normal tacos, so <laughs> we're trying to just put that out there. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like this. This goes and this goes in along with the zoning ordinance. And I think the main concern would be the lighting. Uh, we like the that. That style lighting. Right. Yeah, it seems to be consistent it with the It shouldn't be a problem with your neighbors who are residential. No. Because it's not. more concentrated. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do have a, a quick question just about y'all's thoughts on this. One of the things that we were looking at is actually sandblasting the brick on the front of the building uh, because it had somebody had, had gone through and like sponge painted uh, the brick that's on there. Um, it was just something I thought I'd get y'all's opinion on. I wouldn't, I'd be nervous about sandblasting the brick. I noticed that the other day when I was by there and thought it did need to be cleaned up, but I'm not sure sandblasting, if they have to, it needs to be really gently done. Okay. Because you'd be real gentle with it. I think the yeah. sides of the buildings are kind of cool because it kind of tells a story of the right. of what was there and how it used to be right. actually connected right. over to the Wayfair, but the front just has kind of spray, someone just took spray paint and spray I paint. Know, yeah. It, it may not be as obvious. If you're standing farther back, you can't tell it off. You really, I mean, I've spent hours staring at the building, so I've, it kind of, to me, it stands out more. Um, but um, that's an interesting point about. Uh, how much How much of the paint is on there? I mean, how, how, how large a space is it? It's the whole front of the building. Um, it, well, you know, I, apparently it's not that noticeable. I think it may be more noticeable. And, and if we paint this sign, I think a lot of people's uh, visually are going to be drawn to the sign and maybe not look. Be scared of damaging the brick. Yeah. Uh, I, we would, we'd talk to somebody that, that does that professionally as far as building re restoration goes. But, um, and it was, it was pretty expensive. So I actually kind of like the fact that you guys don't think it's a good idea because they'll save me <laughs> some money. So we'll roll with that. Okay, well that's it. Do you guys have any other questions? I'm glad you liked the fun. I was a little scared you guys were gonna think it was weird. I like it a lot. Okay, all right, awesome. Do we have any questions from the public? Okay. Do we have a motion to approve as presented? I move we approve it as presented. I second. Okay, we have a motion from Faye. We have a second from Jane. All in favor? Aye. Great, unanimously approved. 
All right, and I'll be back Thank in a. Thank you for making that street look nice. It's going to be great. Once everything gets done, it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be really great. I'll be back in a minute. I'm helping out with the 130 South, so I'll see you guys in just a second. All right, motion carries. Thank you very much. All right, sixth item of business. Um, we have um, another signage here. Let's see. Um, let's see. Oh no, wait. This is this is not signage. What is this? This is um, 904 South Broad Street. Good evening. Hello. Um, I'm Lee Malcolm, and I sent in my proposal. I think my graphics were self-explanatory. Um, this is simply trying to increase the footprint of a little 870 square foot cottage. Um, and it will give me the opportunity to turn this dwelling into a two bedroom and still have a functional kitchen, laundry room, and bathroom. Um, the only question I have is if I know I'm going back with six over six windows on the addition, but can they be vinyl clad? Okay, thank you. And I'm not intending to remove the existing windows unless we were to get into a problem on the back where the existing kitchen is. And in that event, I would go back with a six over six um, vinyl clad. Mm -hmm. That window looks a little iffy. Uh, I, I move we accept it. I don't, are you allowed to wait to just have questions? Or? Um, yeah, I think alterations should re respect the integrity of the original structure. And I think this request does not hinder any historic integrity. Very well presented. It Thank is very well thorough. Does it, do we have any questions from the public? Do we have a motion to approve? I move that we approve it as presented. Do we have a second? We have a motion to approve by Faye. We have a second from Jane. All in favor? We have unanimous approval. And the motion carries. Thank you. Our next item of business, we have um, detached garage for 211 Boulevard. Hello, I'm Shannon Sturgill, and this is my wife, Sarah. Uh, we bought the house at 211 Boulevard, the one that was moved behind John's supermarket, okay. and we are wanting to build a detached garage at that property. Um, it's a 35 by 50 structure. It would go at the back line of the property, completely blocking the view of John's supermarket from Boulevard. I went down and looked at that, and mm -hmm. I asked the guy that was there. We needed a, a, a plant that was to scale. I wish you would have asked that guy, or I wish you would have called me, well, I didn't and I could have met you over there. Well, I didn't really know what I was looking at at the time. And he said that he had told you that you need one, but that's neither here nor there. Well, we'll he's a, he's my contractor. He he doesn't advise me on that kind of stuff. I, well, we'll work with what we have. And I walked that property. Yes, ma'am. And the tr the three trees in the back would stay. All the trees would stay. Mm -hmm. That's what he said. Yeah, they'll. I yeah, we're not going to remove any trees. trees yes, yeah. <clears throat> Done a great job. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. You really have I got a tour? Thank you. Oh, okay, great. Okay. Yes. <laughs> And I also drove around, and yes, it, I really didn't think it was a detraction mm -hmm. from the back, even in from John's parking in the back of that. Right. Um, it really blocks the view yeah. from mm -hmm. Boulevard of his uh, all the mechanicals behind John's. I had a little design suggestion to the this. Okay. Uh, well, yes, ma'am. Wondered what about doing a barrel vault for those uh, uh, instead of the pointed roof? Do the barrel to it would kind of go with your front entrance, you know, the mm -hmm. round part of your portico. Yes, ma'am. It maybe if you did a round, it would take away some of the harshness of. Well, the I learned something doing that portico and the upper porch. When you do round, it adds more dollars. So, um, you know, we are at a point where we are concerned about price too. So, right. well, 
I um, yes, ma'am. Yes, sir, I understand. Yes, ma'am. You get rich, you know. Yes. <laughs> Yes, I just thank, think it would make it a little bit more. Yes, ma'am. I do like that idea. Yes, ma'am. Um, I think you've done a good job. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Be nice to block that view, too. I think it would yeah, be. It, we it, love John, so I don't want to. I think I want my. <laughs> I, I love John's, too, John, but I, John, I, so I, I like that. Every morning when I have my coffee. Mm -hmm. so we, we it looks good. I think the proportion's good. If you tried to do a double carport as big as the house is, it would right. be lost. You really needed that size. Yes, ma'am. To do it. And y'all did a very good job presenting it. And Thank you. And we'll be taking the driveway off the back yeah, so it, we won't have two driveways off of the boulevard. On yes, ma'am. On around. Okay. Mm -hmm. I move this be accepted as proposed. Well, do we have any more questions? Do we have any questions from the public? Okay, we have a motion? Uh, yeah, I move right. that we accept it. We have a motion to accept by Faye. Do we have a second? I second. We have a motion to second by Jane. All in favor? Aye. Unanimously, we've, it's accepted. Thank you Thank very, you very much. much. I appreciate it. Motion carried. All right, our next item of business is a request, I think it's a signage request for 130 South Broad. Hey, I'm Hello back. Again. So I actually I actually own the building, um, 130 South Broad, and um, Joe Nedza, the uh, proprietor, is he already had a family vacation scheduled with his young family, so they're at the beach right now. Um, but I also have uh, Chelsea Ladd, who's going to be the general manager here, so she could answer any questions about um, the business that you guys had, if you'd like to ask her any questions about the business. But I, I'm pretty well informed about the building and then the sign that they've submitted to you guys. Is it just paint on the building? Yes, ma'am. Also, strange. Yep, similar strange taco. It's actually the same uh, Levi Deli. I don't know if you guys know him. Uh, he's painted. A, he did Silver Queen and um, a lot of the murals actually around downtown area. Um, and so he's a local artist. So he's painting their their logo. Looking at this. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. To me, there's a lot going on. I well, love what you did in yours. The uh, butcher block is coming off the front, if that makes it more simplistic. Um, but that whole thing, the whole signage, I think if you were to move breakfast, coffee, and donuts down to the bottom of the butcher block to the window, okay, I think mm -hmm. people could see it better. I'm an artist and yes, interior designer, so I'm talking from a design standpoint. The, as they're walking, they would know what they're seeing, you know, what's inside, or if they're driving. Okay. The way your other sign was, it was bah, you know, it popped. Yes, ma'am. But this, to me, doesn't pop. It's too much, it's too busy, I think. Well, you got so much white at the top. Right. It sort of fades away. Right. The right. other thing that kind of bothers me is, I know we can't tell you what color to paint it, but... This looks so beachy for a traditional city like Monroe. You know well, what? The, the Blue Rooster could have painted their building blue. Yes, ma'am. But they didn't. So Ned's is an established business in downtown Athens. So he, he has an established restaurant. So they're not, they're, they're not working from a new palette. I mean, he has a logo designed. Um, he has a color scheme. He has Pantone colors that he has. But, picked out. but hear me out now, just a minute. Yes, ma'am. So I, none of these. Background was white or yes, cream, and you used the blue and the pink as accents. Right. I think you would have a whole lot more impact. Can't make any of those decisions for him. I, I came to basically speak on behalf of the size of the sign that it was it was applicable to the the square footage of the building. Okay. So I can I can pass along those comments. I actually had suggested the breakfast, coffee, and donuts go across the bottom of the windows. Yeah. Um, so I can suggest that to him. Um, but I also know that he is on. Um, uh, you know, they're they're scheduled to open the first of August. So tabling this, I don't think, is something that. He would be interested in doing um 
I could ask him um, something I could um, suggest is that if the board could approve the NEDS's logo um, on there and um, table the other two or table the breakfast coffee and donuts, that could be something that um, oh. he could come back oh, and, those and speak three windows. Windows. I mean, I like it on the bottom of the windows. It sense. keeps the window open because I don't think you should block a win the light coming yeah, I in. I agree with you there. I probably wouldn't. A restaurant measure either. I like the, the light. Graphic so at the bottom of the window, I have no problem with that. It's too big. It's too big if they put the whole thing in like that. I thought he was talking about the glass. But it would be that's better coming down. That's right. I, I think that's a good point. You think you'd like if it I on the glass? If one whole dimension, then yeah. it's going to exceed Just the breakfast 75. Right. Well, you know, people right. see well, that one and a half square feet. By, right. But the NEDS is up top. But the, the good thing about some well, of Well, which these, windows? Because there's four windows. Like now. This, I mean, cool. I, we, I, I, would, we, I would break that up into two. I mean, he really gets one wall sign. But right. We got a problem with the I don't. Size. I mean, I don't really care either way. Everything's next to it. Okay. If he puts the... the yeah. Only one by nineteen. Have at the bottom. You can't. You're not allowed but one sign. But if you put it all in one, it's too big. Okay. And if you can't have but one, so this is, would end up being two to get that first one small enough. So if you move the wordage down, the donuts and whatever it is, coffee down on the window, it doesn't count. Okay. So. Um, Chelsea Ladd, who's here representing, said she could actually approve that that be changed so it doesn't have to be come back. So where the Nedzas would stay up top and the verbiage would would go down to the windows. That was good. That's good. Mm -hmm. um, so um, do I need to f formally ask that and um, or present that to you guys so you can vote on that? We would need a, what, a motion for that? They can put it in the motion. Okay, all right. You know, I can, I know that the paint color doesn't have to come uh, back before you guys, but I can share your thoughts with uh, Mr. Nensa. It's like green eggs and ham. You well, know what I, I mean? mean? <laughs> you know, art is uh, subjective, so. Right, right, it yeah. is, yeah. And, uh, and speaking on the paint color, there might be a slight color problem with the printout that you have. I think the Nedza color is more like the color that's on the story shop. It's kind of a greenish. It is a lighter. Green. I don't it's know. It's on the back of the w building, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah. It's on the back. I went by and saw it. Yep. So. Not nice. Okay. Well. You know, I'm just concerned. You know what they say about opinions. You know, I'm just concerned about it not fitting in Monroe. I understand. That's it's your opinion, real, and you're entitled no, to but it. But I'm on the commission here, so I have an opinion that's really important. I understand that, ma'am. All right. All right bef before we make a motion, do we have any any questions from the public? All right. So we need to word. Do we do we have any? No. All right. Yeah. Only dealing with the signage because we don't have a say in the color. Mm -hmm. All right. So we need to re Laura. We need to reword the motion. Is that correct? Yes, to include that the breakfast, coffee, and donuts will be on the windows. Okay. All right. Do we have a motion? And we're going to need whoever makes the motion is going to need to reword word the motion so that the so that the breakfast, coffee, and donuts is on the on the windows. Do we have a motion? Okay. I motion um, that the Nedza stays on the building up top, but the breakfast, coffee, donuts is moved down to the windows. Bottom of the windows. Bottom of the windows. Sounds good. Do we have a second? Second. All right, we have a motion made by Laura and a second by Faye. All in favor? All right. All right, thank you guys so much. Y'all have a great evening. Thank you very much. Motion, motion is carried. All right, do we, do we have any new business? No? No new business? All right. Other than those four items you just had. Huh? No, other than those four items you just had. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I went right through it, didn't I? <laughs> I just went straight through. All right. Well, this concludes the HPC meeting of June 28th, 2022.
We just need a motion to adjourn. All right, do we have a motion to adjourn? A motion. All right, do we have a second? Second. All right, this concludes the HPC meeting of June 28, 2022. We are adjourned.